Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. For this one, I wanted to cover some classic decks that you might recognize and already enjoy playing so that you can climb this patch. Trust me, you don't want to miss out. That way you have a good understanding of what's strong, whether you want to play the best decks themselves or if you want to know how to counter them. Let's see what these strong decks are, shall we? Welcome to Meta Report. And we'll be starting off with the classic of classics. You honestly don't get any more iconic than this deck, and that is Lurk. Coming in with a win rate of 51.56% and a play rate of 2.84%, it's doing as solid as ever. Its best matchups are Jack Set, Timo Kate, Lissandra Voli, and Aurelian Soul Elder Dragon. Its worst matchups are Jinx Cannon Discard, Riven Morgana, Garen Galio Elder, and Neela Janna. This is the basic list that comes up on Runeterra AR, this is the one that most people are playing, so go ahead and take a glance over it. The main theme of the deck is to attack every single turn that you can, ideally also getting Snapjaw Swarm on defense turns, that way you get to ramp Lurk and have really strong fishes. So we have Bloodbait, which is a Lurk spell, which is super nice, that way we have a little bit more consistency, and we have a way to put Snapjaw Swarm on the top of our deck, so this is really good to do on attack turns, right, use the Bloodbait, that way we can do Snapjaw Swarm on the following turn. Next we have Forsaken Bakai, who is a non-lurker, but does help us uh, with Predict. Predict puts a card on top of our deck after showing us three. We want to pick a lurker, that way we can have our extra attacks ramping and get our lurk procs going. Next we have Sharkling, starts as a 1-1-2, but again after you attack a couple times this thing can be a 3-2, 4-2, 5-2, and it keeps scaling infinitely into the late game. And next we have Hatchling, which is a 1-mana 1-1 one -one with Fearsome, so one less HP than our Sharkling, but has the Fearsome keyword, making it much harder to block. Next we have Chronomancer, another Predict unit. This is really nice if we're attacking on evens, that way we can use the Chronomancer, get the Predict, and keep our Lurk going. Call the pack to put something from our hand to the top of the deck, and then we get some extra resources. And this is really nice at hitting our champions for the most part. Our champions we don't want in our opening hand, we actually want to like predict into them and try to hit them naturally that way we get their buffs and stuff like that so call the pack can help unclog our hand if we're on multiple champions put them on top attack get some extra resources just a do all card for two mana next we have redfin hammer snout a really strong card in the early game be able to give something vulnerable and take out high priority targets and next we have one ruthless predator this has been run as one of uh, every so often its main purpose is to ramp the Rek'Sai level and try to turbo her. So what happens is you attack with Rek'Sai with 6 attack. She gets plus 2 from Ruthless Pred, 1 from her own effect, and then 1 from Lurking. So that is 10 right there. So if you get her to the 6 attack threshold and use Ruthless Predator while also having a Lurker on top of the deck, you have a very fast Rek'Sai level. And next we have 3 hard run snapjaw swarm so we can continue proccing lurk on our defense turns. And next we have Rek'Sai, when I lurk or attack, grant lurker allies everywhere plus 1. Round end, place me into your deck. However, you get to keep her, she doesn't go away, if you attack with 10 plus power with her. Then she creates 3 random lurkers in your hand and gains overwhelm, becoming a really strong finisher. Next we have Zersai Collar, which is a lurk and also predict all in one, love that. Right of Negation as a quick one of, that way we can stop big spells or removal cards. And next we have Blood in the Water to Rally, that way we can attack on defense turns and try to close out the game, or attack multiple times in the same turn, and just try to finish out. Next we have Pike, who uh, by himself is not super great, he has quick attack, that's kind of cool. But if we Lurk Pike, so he's on top of the deck when we attack, then uh, we get Pike's Spell, which is much better. It's a 5 mana fast speed spell that says summon Pike striking an enemy. So you can come down, immediately kill something, land, have some um, points for his level up, and just be on the board afterwards. Really, really strong effect. Next we have Zessereth the Under Titan, one of our top end guys. If we can get this thing up to 8 power, it will gain Fearsome Overwhelm Spell Shield. Really, really nice. And Zersai Doombreaker to round it out. 635 with Overwhelm, so another Overwhelm unit. Just try to close out the game with our turn 5 and turn 6 dudes. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. I'll be giving context why I'm playing certain cards and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. And for the example game, we're going to be fighting Akshan Udir. We have Snapjaw Swarm, that's nice for defense. We have Sharkling, Caller, all the pack. Honestly, a pretty good hand. The only issue is we're not attacking on odds. We would love to be attacking on one here. Uh, that way we can start proccing Lurk immediately, but we are on evens. But I do think this hand's keepable, maybe minus the call of the pack. However, I think it's like pretty nice to have just in case we do top deck our champions. And it's also extra resources for us, so like why not? 
What I probably want to do is Sharkling and then open attack on two. Unless I top deck uh, Chronomancer. Yep, we're definitely going to take that. And then, are we open attacking with Sharkling or Plying? Let's see. Looks like we are open attacking. We hit Lurk. So now we got the extra attack on all of our dudes. And we're going to float two mana, which is pretty nice since we have two mana spells anyways. Action, okay. I hope they don't do first action weapon. If they do, we're going to have to do like Snapjaw Swarm and also, yeah, okay. Buff the Snapjaw Swarm with the Ruthless Pred, which isn't bad. It's a bit abnormal, but it's it's worth. So let's do Snapjaw Swarm here, right? We hit Lurk, we hit Pike. We see that with uh, Pike's face. They don't know that though. And then we use Ruthless Predator to gain attack and trade into the Action. This is a really big tempo swing. It could honestly even be uh, FFable by them because they lose Action and they lost their three mana weapon and they can't lucky find anything. So just overall like a much better spot for us than them. All right, we have Pike Spell in hand. This turn I'd like to do Xerxai Collar probably. See if we can hit something here. Chronomancer or another Caller. Mm, I kind of like having another Caller. Just for more predict. And we can continue attacking. Blades of the Fallen. Alright, so they're going to keep a unit essentially after this one dies. 3-2. Pretty good synergy with the Swinging Glaive. I kind of respect that combo. Pass. If they put the weapon on Mirage, we could do death from below. We just have this in our pocket. Mm. We don't have a lot of mana to like bait something. I guess I could do like call the pack Dunebreaker and just see what we grab here. Maybe a one drop. One drop or two drop. Oh yeah, we got Snapjaw Swarm. Um, I'm kind of fine with this. So what I'm going to do is Snapjaw Swarm on defense here. Oh, you know, we could actually do call it first and predict. We kind of have a nasty little combo. Since I'm not going to play Pike this turn, let's just go ahead and do Caller. And hit, um... I guess another Call the Pack's fine. Just keep getting resources. And then Snapdrill Swarm. Just keep it going. Bonk. And then I'm probably just going to open attack with the full board. Just send it. Deal one to everything. Okay. That is interesting. One of my dudes dies, so pretty good spell. I don't mind Ram Stance. I'm kind of glad it wasn't like a regen one or overwhelm one. I think this deck can get like really far ahead with those stances. So just ramming me is okay. Don't take that out of context. So what else we got? Right, it was called a pack because we put that there. Pike spell. I mean, I'd like to use that on Udyr on five. I kind of want to open attack then. I think what they want to do is play Udyr and then like Lucky find him. And we have uh, Pike spell. Pike is up to six attack right now, so he can do a number on him. He can do some damage, so we're going to pass until we see something killable. Uh, that's not really killable. I don't care about that too much. We can play Dune Breaker off of this then and just keep holding the death from below. We want to use it on Udyr and we want to use it when they're below right of negation mana. Those are, that's like our biggest cause of concern because this is a spell. When Pike is a spell, he can be interacted with via deny. So we have to keep that in mind. Grab. Are you also going to pressure me with that Merciless Hunter? I mean, you can. No? All right. I suppose that is fine, my friends. Um, we could also do Dune Breaker, open with both, and then do like a Blood in the Water play. We go into eight floating ones, so that's only nine mana, so we can't do Death from Below and Blood in the Water next turn, so that's kind of sad. Hmm, I don't really have much else that I can do though. Like, I'm not going to call the pack this Dune Breaker, am I? Maybe. I think that's actually the play here. And then pass. Because I don't mind burning two mana. Them burning all this is not very good for them. I still want to be on death from below just in case they play Udyr. There's the Udyr. Do you think they're going to equip the weapon right now? 
They'd probably do a weapon or a stance here, right? Surely they don't. They passed on me! Hey, yo! That was dastardly. Okay, so I have 11 mana. I can lead with the hatchling. They really don't want to play below right negation for me. I see. That means it's in their hand. So. All good. We can do blood in the water and death from below, maybe. Ooh, what is that? We're going to use this as a response. Holy guacamole. Siphoning strike. They probably do other. Oh, no right negation. I was willing to kind of accept it there. On the off chance they don't have it, then we get to basically win out here. We just open attack and then rally attack again. Bonk, bonk, bonk. That siphoning strike scared me though. And moving on to another classic and also one of my personal favorite decks, we have Ash LeBonk. Coming in with a win rate of 50.76 and a play rate of 1.01, it's definitely seen some better days, but it's still up and kicking. Its best matchups include Jack Neela Janna, Set Jack, Riven Morg, and Sundisk. Its worst matchups are Aesol Morgana Elder, Timo Nora, Jinani, and Viego Elder Mordekaiser. This is another long-standing fan favorite deck. It's super fun, super good mid-range. You basically just want to like set up your board, have buffs in hand, and contest the board and keep winning combat. Very similar to like a Demacia playstyle. However, a lot more protection via the Sky Splitter, the Elixir of Irons, and also the Frostbite mechanic that is exclusive to Freljord. So starting us off, we have Brittle Steel to Frostbite an enemy with three or less health. Really good for trading and really good for preventing things like elusive hits from uh, dealing damage to you. Triple Elix of Iron to protect during combat and also from Mystic Shot type effects. Double Omen Hawk to give our uh, deck a little bit of a boost and also is an elusive blocker so we can deal with Teemo on turn one. Ice Veil Archer for an on play Frostbite. Really, really nice. Double Sky Splitter, again for combat, or also for spell protection. Next, we have the Darkened Spear that gives 2 HP to one of our allies. Ideally, we want to put this on LeBonk if you can. And then on Attack Call, grant the top 2 allies in your deck plus 1 plus 1, so very similar to the Omen Hawk effect. And you can play a Naka in the late game as a on Attack Call, Summon from Deck, Dude. And that's really cool. Sometimes you can hit like a Naka into a Naka and that's Turbo Hyrule. You can hit a Naka into the draw card, a Naka into Tactician, which is another Hyrule, so you can rally and attack again. Really, really cool stuff with this card. Next, we have Trifarian Glory Seeker 251 uh, with Camp Block, but also Challenger. So really good if you have a Frostbite or Spell Protection. That way you can keep her alive and attack multiple times while contesting the opponent's units. Next, we have LeBonk 5-2 with Quick Attack. I've seen you deal 15 damage. When I level up, create a mirror image. Mirror image is awesome. It says pick an ally, summon an exact ephemeral copy of it. That way we can get their um, on summon effects, like the draw or the rally, or we can get an additional ash for another frostbite to maybe level her. Really, really cool card that has a lot of flexible options within the deck. And she's also a 6-3 that makes mirror image cheaper and generates more if you don't have one. Three Reckless Trifurion as a reputation procker and also helps with the LeBlanc level. 354 Camp Block. Really, really strong at just swinging over and over. Next, we have Ash on attack call. Frostbite, the strongest enemy. If you've reduced the power of five plus enemies to zero, I level up. Also, create a Crystal Arrow on top of the deck. Crystal Arrow is an AoE Frostbite, which is super important because enemies that are Frostbitten or have zero power cannot block. So you set up a bunch of dudes, and then you attack, the opponent can't block because they're all frostbitten, and then you win the game. Triple Bloody Business, which is a 4 mana fast speed spell, however, reputation I cost 2 less. Again, with Reckless Trifiri and LeBanc, Ash all being 5 attack, the Glory Seeker as well, you're gonna get this reputation proc most of your games. Um, it, They just need to strike 4 times. And then I cost 2 less. An ally with 5 plus power strikes an enemy. So for 2 mana, this card's insane. If you get the reputation proc, it's just like one of the best cards in the deck. Because the opponent always has to respect a 2 mana strike spell. Next we have Triple Assessor 443. When I'm summoned, draw 1 for each 5 plus power ally you have. So if you have like 3 of them, you get to draw 3. She counts herself too, so if she's hit by Omen Hawk or the Anaka weapon, then she can also draw off of herself on her play, which is good. Especially if you mirror image her with a bonk, you can get even more draw cards. Next we have Averosian Hearthguard 556. When I'm summoned, grant all allies in your deck plus 1 plus 1. So if the Assessor isn't 5 attack yet, well she definitely is after Hearthguard comes down, which is super nice at again just 
refilling your hand, drawing a bunch, and this guy will make all of your dudes a little bit stronger as you draw into them. Next we have Double Harsh Winds for a Burst Speed Frostbite 2. Really good defensively, of course, but you can also use this aggressively with leveled Ash on the board, and then you can make it to where three enemies can't block you. Two from the Harsh Winds, one from Ash's Attack Call. Really, really strong effect. And finally, we have two Tactician. Reputation, I cost two less, so he's going to be a six mana. When I'm summoned Rally as a 5-5, five five, really, really good. Rally is one of the strongest mechanics in this deck. Oftentimes, you will play around Tactician when you open him, and you will win through him. Really, really good. One of the best cards here. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now, here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. And for this example game, we have the Age of Dragons featuring Aurelian Soul and Elder. So what we probably want most of the time is a combination of units and protection spells. I think we can pitch Hearth, uh, Hearth Guard and try to keep Ash and try to get like a little bit of a mix here. Assessor's kind of okay. We don't want her in our opening hand though. We'd rather her get buffed by Omen, but yeah, we want Omen on one and then we want like two units and two spells or like a spell and the weapon. Uh, yeah, we can open attack and float two. Floating 2 is fine for us since we have 2 spells to play for that mana. Let's see if we can get LeBanc on 3 here off the top. Nope. I will take Trifarian though. That's awesome. 6-5 uh, Trifarian. We can start beating down the board with this. Yep. Oh, they didn't even attack. They could have attacked with that Youngling for free. All good though. LeBanc can float 3 or Ash floating 2. Hmm... I'm assuming they're on Sunburst, Falling Star, stuff like that, right? Let's get the LeBanc. I think LeBanc is better on the off chance that they're not on removal, because then we can get Mirror Image and just start winning. Like, she's such a win more card. Develop her as soon as you can and try to get that level. It's usually worth. We'll send in both of these. If you want extra mana, I, I don't care. Go ahead and sack your blue Sentinel. I never really care about that. If they try to do a singular Falling Star, we can protect LeBanc from it by putting her up to 5 HP, which is nice. That's only possible because of the plus one plus one we got from Omen, so pretty lucky hit. Um, what else? Attacking with LeBanc on the far right is pretty good habit, because she can level during combat and push more damage, so something I did as well. Just because it's good habit. She didn't level here, but just nice to do. Pass, nice, no Falling Star. They do have the extra mana, so they're going into turn 6. They can do Cloud. Usually that's what they want to do as soon as they can. Otrani, oh, okay. Interesting. Um, I'm down to play the Ash here. I'm kind of sad about these Assessors not getting hit. This is like really unlucky, but all good. Doesn't matter all that much. Um, Passing. Ooh, yeah. I'm down. I don't really need to do a bloody business. I'm kind of okay with just open attacking here like this. Again, the bonk on the far right. Like, this is just such a disgusting board we have set up. Three drop, another three drop, ash, protection mana. We should be pretty good here. Um, Stun? Like, I guess it could be in, like, Celestial Wonder and double stun me. And then we're just going to have to like turbo draw until we find our rally guy. That's kind of the gameplay if that happens. We won't be on reputation anymore. Oh, they're just giving it to us. That's the best case scenario, I think. Let me get that. The black rose blooms once more. Yeah, let me get all that. Because now the assessor is going to draw us three. Yes, we have hand space. We are okay to do that. It's probably better than playing Hearthguard. I kind of just want my rally, dude. Like, as soon as possible. Ocean? Um... Okay. Let's do Assessor. One, two, three. I probably also want to bloody business that. Oh, this one. Just to get the Alatus off the board. And uh, keep their board down. And then we can also play... Um, I want to keep Darken Spear as a Naka at the moment. We can play a Glory Seeker. Just to get another dude on the board. We're looking for our Rally guy now, and that's kind of it. Another Alatus. Alright. Well, you know what we could do? 
We could do Ice Veil Archer. And Darken Spear on Ash. Because we don't have room for the Anaka anymore, so I don't want to burn too much mana. I want to make sure I have some hand space next turn. I'm going to open attack, try to threaten lethal, and then if something weird happens, we can do mirror image on our draw card and try to rally. That's the full game plan. So send everything. Yep. Yep. Just send everything. They have to uh, get through this first before anything else. And to that I say, good luck. Ah, they actually did it, huh? All right. Uh, sounds good to me. They didn't kill any of my dudes, though. That's kind of not okay. That's a little bit annoying, actually. I can't really do the mirror image on the Assessor right now, right? Because if I do that, I don't get the Ahun Summon because she gets burnt. So I could do this and try to find him. Line up. Just replace. I could have replaced the 3-1 as well. Uh, and then do Bloody Business. 7-4-3. Bloody Business. I don't want Bloody Business that one, though. Yeah. I should replace the 3-1. I don't think it ever matters, but... I'm just going a little fast. Bonk. And then... Maybe even bloody that again. A lot this is really annoying. Just to make sure it's out of here. I don't really care about the Cloud Drake existing. Honestly, I don't want to kill the Cloud Drake because then they get more hand reduction. Alright. Bring me the rally. He's got to be in here somewhere, right? Okay. Th they just have infinite Galatis, I guess. Or Alatis, whatever. Infinite. I want to take all that damage, so I'm going to replace you and you. Yeah. So, like, we're good. We just need to close it out. And for the final deck, we have a variation of Pirate Burn taking us all the way back to 2020. Coming in with a win rate of 54.39% and a play rate of 0.62%, it's pretty strong, just not as played. Its best matchups are Lissandra Voli War Mother, surprisingly, Bard Mordekaiser, Karma Set Fraljord, also surprising, and also Voli Elder. The reason for this is because a lot of lists have like dropped Avalanche and stuff like that, but also like Avalanche isn't good enough, so that's why you're seeing the pirates beating the uh, Fraljord for the first time in history. Also, the fact that they don't have Vile Feast in Shadow Isles that really helps. Its worst matchups are Timo Trist Elder. Hey, that's my deck. Riven Morgana, Seraphine Set, and also Overwhelm. So this deck wants to just slam units on the board, go wide, uh, attack relentlessly. It's just aggro burn. So yeah, it, it just swarms and then finishes out with direct damage. And then also has draw to refill and try to get to that direct damage. Fire Spitter plus Might combo as well for top end damage. It's just, um, yeah, pretty, pretty standard. We got a couple Crimson Pigeons coming in so we can suck and get extra stats. We have Jagged Butcher as a 2-2 that can also be a 3-3, so we care about the 1-drops a lot and these stats, so really, really nice to get some attack pressure. Saboteur, another aggressive 1-drop that deals direct damage. Precious Pet, a aggressive 1-drop that has Fearsome, so he's harder to block. All good stuff. Next, we have Triple Arena Battlecaster, which I have fit in here. The default version does not run Battlecaster, but believe me, this card is really good with this style of deck, especially since we have Mirai Warden to go wide very easily. We can be on certain hands that are like one drop, one drop, double twos, and then we just win the game because of Battlecaster. And we already win the Avalanche matchup anyways, so anything else, we just win like twice as hard, making it really hard for the opponent to come back from certain game states if we have the Battlecaster openers, so really good at just going wide and getting a lot of attack pressure. Next we have Double Brothers Bond to trade up into things that are uh, annoying blockers, or for the most part we actually use this to deal direct damage to the enemy Nexus. Next we have a Double Demolitionist coming in as a finisher card, or a way to soften the opponent down into like Noxion Fervor lethal ranges or Enraged Fire Spitter, just like another deal 2 to the enemy Nexus. 
Next, we have Mariah Warden to help our go wide strategy. 2 2 1, that summons a random 1 cost. The 1 costs on average are very good. You're going to be happy like 9 out of 10 times. The only time you're not happy is if you get that ephemeral on defense turn, or if there's any zero attack one still in standard. We hate to see that. So, yeah, those are the only ones. But Mariah Warden, overall, pretty good. Next, we have Neela. Neela is going to come in as a hard to block two drop that also gives you a slipstream, allowing you to draw some more cards in a few turns. That way, you can try to get some direct damage or reswarm the board in case something has happened and the opponent is contesting your board. So, that's really nice. A little bit of refill. You're not really trying to level her. I don't think you're going to draw that many cards with this deck, even if you open multiple Neelas, multiple Ivan the Gakabotoses. So, don't really uh, worry about her level up too much. It's fine. Don't, don't really worry about it. Just. Play Neela, attack, and deal some damage. Next we have Double Might coming in, mainly for Fire Spitter, but you can put it on something else as well, just to push some Overwhelm damage. Triple Misfortune coming in. Again, we're not trying to level her because we're not playing Scouts. We are just using her for her direct damage skill. Really, really nice. Next we have Triple Fervor to close out the game. Double Razor Mace to help continue the pressure in the mid game. Overwhelm unit, that's a 4-4. Cursing the opponent with Ikor is really nice, making it hard for the opponent to uh, spend their mana efficiently. They may want to cast Ikor, that way they don't take extra damage because this can get really annoying for them, especially if it stacks up. Triple Ivan the Gakopodos coming in as refill, but also a tentacle. This card also has a lot of great synergy with Arena Battlecaster, so you can set up like defense four and then open attack Ivan the Gakopodos on five, get an additional attacker with the tentacle. It's going to get buffed by the Battlecaster, and that just feels super good. And finally, we have Fire Spitter coming in as one of our finisher cards as well. Great with Might, really good two direct damage to the enemy Nexus, or killing off something that's a high priority target on the enemy board and making them surrender. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. And for this example game, we're going to be fighting Vain Orn. Really cool um, weapon combo here. I don't really see this too often, but I kind of like it. So we have Precious Pet, Sabbo. We love the extra like one drops in our opening hand. I think we get rid of the spells and just try to go for more ones. For the most part, we just want all of our ones and twos. That way we can slam them as early as possible, keep going wide, keep attacking, and just try to outpressure the opponent. So what do we think they play on turn one? You think they run Omenhawk? They're in Freljord, so I guess they could. I think Precious Pet would be the very safe turn one play. Saboteur is less safe, but also kills something. Mm. They could also play the Steadfast Elkin, right? A one mana two two. Let's get the Precious Pet down. I'm just going to go for the nice, safe, guaranteed 2 damage. If they don't have a 1 drop here, I lose out on 1 damage. So be it. With how good my hand is, I don't really need to take the risk. I'm down to just play nice and safe and spam the board. Nice! We have a really wide hand. So we're going to do Mirai Warden to go wide. And then we're going to do Battlecaster Sabo. And we just have like an insane attack 3 board. Um, Sabo, Explosive. don't you avalanche me or something weird? There's no way they run avalanche and Vayne Orn. Demons okay, there's Vayne. Uh, Battlecaster, yeah. Men. Now, don't have Fish Fight or anything either. Oh, you punk. Alright, I'll take a single though, it's all good. Now, everything trades into Vayne, and if they didn't have single then, hey, Same. Battlecaster just wins the game solo. But I'm pretty happy with... Two units killing their veins, so they have empty board going into turn four, and I can just redevelop pretty easily. Oh yeah, dude, Mariah Ward and Neela, holy moly. A heal card, yeah, you need that. You better hope you heal like seven billion times because this is about to get pretty bad for you. Pretty bad. Why no attack? You can attack me. And I smile. No, no attack. Okay. Well, I will be doing the attacking then. Works for me. Full wide board on open. And then they're going to block my Neela. Goodbye, Neela. I could honestly leave this board space open. Combat cook. Yes, another heal. That is also pretty fine. Uh, they don't want to attack with the blacksmith. Oh, that was really cute. A nice quick heal, so I can't actually execute her with a fire spitter. Hmm. 
All good, I'm still gonna shoot her though. Better than the quick attack dude, I can't block him. I'd probably just give the combat cook like a 2-1 and then play I and the Gakobotos on open or give him the 1-1 of quick attack. That is what I think I should do here. Um, yeah, this is going to be a bit annoying. They can't attack the Elkin though because I'll block with Fire Spitter. Another combat cook. Tough unit. Scout? I mean, Scout would be pretty annoying for me. Fearsome. All good with that. So, if they attack with Elkin, they're trolling. That's all I know. The 5-3. Oh, never mind. They're not trolling anymore. Now they're fine. This is a pretty good play. It's a pretty good play. Uh, 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 uh. I could do this and then open with the eye. Yeah. Seems good. Right. Let's close this out this turn, lads. We have a fur. Oh, we have two fervors. We should be so good to go. Send it. We don't have enough mana to do both, but I think with one fervor we should be okay. We're at least killing the blacksmith too. Too much salt. But like I do suppose, yeah, they could be on a single, but that's where our fervor would come in. So we have uh, damage to spare even. Nice and easy. Bonk, bonk, bonk. And that's it for this week's decks. Extra shout out to the patrons on screen. Much love and thank you for supporting. So yeah, to wrap things up, I wanted to cover some of the classic decks that have been in the game for a while, and what the lists look like nowadays. They're honestly faring pretty well with how strong the meta decks are, so I'd recommend playing them if you've enjoyed them in the past. This has been Meta Report, thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters!